Hello everybody and welcome back, this is Skidoon and it's time for another Minimator tutorial video. Now today I want to go over camera rigging, um, or I just, I guess camera placement as far as pers first person videos go. Uh, so I've tinkered around with it just a little bit and I'll show you what I've come up with. Um, it's pretty simple, There's, there might be a better way to do it, but this is what I came up with and I'll just play it real quick so you can see what I'm talking about as far as camera rigging goes. So show Steve walking along, turns looks right, looks left, picks up his sword and and the camera follows the sword into the door. Um, that's what I'm calling camera rigging as far as first person goes. Um, so it basically just the camera sits where Steve's head would be so that you get that first person view um, and I purposely I know it probably looked a little bit tacky let me rewind it just a little bit I purposely made it so at certain points you know you can see his shoulder you can see his shoulder over there and then when uh, actually I guess a little bit right there you can actually see his neck let me hide this uh, didn't help much better but uh, you can see his neck along there and I just tried to make it so I mean it does kind of lose the effect when the camera is high enough that you actually don't see the body or any body parts moving because you're then you're not really sure what's going on so I mean if you play any first-person shooters you always have the gun um, out in front of you holding the hand um, your hands holding the gun out in front of you and it kind of gives you that feel that yeah I'm looking right from his eyes and so that's what I tried to do here was when he's walking you do see the shoulders just peek up and down on either side and you do see the sword come up um, and then as he looks I made sure to show part of his shoulder same over here and then when he picks up his arm of course the camera then jumps forward and follows the sword in. and the sword does rotate a little weird I forgot to um, mess with the rotation point on this but it, it did come up with the desired effect that I wanted so let me show you real quick how I did this. It's actually very easy to do. Um, so what I did is first I spawned everything in where I wanted it, of course. And then what I did, you can see Steve does not have a head. Um, and the way to quickly do that is on your keyframes, um, select the head from the body part, come down here to alpha, and as you can see, I've turned it down to zero. It's technically still there, but I have made it invisible. Um, and then, you want to make sure you make that on the first keyframe so that when you make additional keyframes further down the line it keeps that um, keeps that view. Now I guess I guess a cool effect I didn't think of that I'll have to add at the end of this video um, is to make a skin with hollow eyes and put the camera inside of his head so you're actually seeing out of his eyes but that might look a little weird. I don't know I'll toy around that after I actually just thought of that but anyway so what I've done is so I made the character did the whole um, walking animation up to a certain point and then what I did is when I turned on the camera and put a keyframe down here on the on the uh, timeline man I'm struggling today um, what I did I'm actually gonna move this so I don't edit the keyframe is I just moved the camera very slowly holding shift using Q and E to go up and down I brought it down to where I felt like his head would be. Now technically, you know, it should be about right here because you don't look at your neck as you walk, but I still, like I said, I wanted that effect where you could still see moving body parts and you can kind of achieve that by just getting closer down to the neck and keeping just, I mean, you can see that at the bottom of my screen, you can see his neck, so if I just move it just a little bit above that, when he moves, his arms shift up and down so you will see those elbows. And, Let's see. Yeah, so see, I moved it down, and so now you can actually see his whole neck, which does look a little weird, but at the same time, if that's the first person effect you're going for, then that's what you get. And now, an easy way to move the camera, let's say this is where I want it, but say I want him to look up a little more, you don't want to use Q and E to go up. If you just hold the right, right mouse button, the camera just pivots or rotates rather from where it's at. And, uh,. So instead of moving the whole camera up and down, I can just move the, move the view so that it's looking more up. Let's see, right about there. Let's press play. And you still can see a little bit of his neck and his elbows coming up. And it's also going to depend on the second camera view of where his body stops. Now for me, 
um, what I had to do is once I made him walk down here, I just added the second camera keyframe, flew it forward, and stopped it where, you know, above his body. If I look down, you can see his body. And then I'm actually behind his body a little bit, as you can see, so that I can still show the shoulders and neck area. And we'll just put it right there. Let's see. See, I put it a little too high, and you still see his sword moving up, um, but it's, it's just not feeling like it's totally first person because I can't see anything else of his body, so I'm actually going to move it right about there. Press play. Yeah, that's better. A little too much there at the end, but like I said, you just got to mess with it and see how you want it. And then here, I know um, it's a little weird when you try to unparent an object and move it because then it throws it off into the world randomly. And so a little trick that I have come up with, um, this is just something that works for me, there might be a better way as always. I actually have two swords in play here, and you'll see right here on the timeline, oh, let's just click on this keyframe so it's all queued up. I have sword two and sword one. Sword one is parented to Steve's arm, so it is the one, let's go ahead and zoom back here. It is the one that walks with him down and is with him, well that's where his head's turning so you can't, there's actually no movement in his arm, it's with him until this point right here. And at this point I make that sword invisible by selecting that keyframe and clicking invisible. Um, you can see there's actually two swords there. And at the same time I add a second sword, make it visible, I've made it invisible from the first keyframe up to here. If I was to make it visible you would see it right there and it moves along with him. Um, but I don't want to show that so I make it invisible and it shows up right at the moment I have it leave his hand so right you can you can see the transition just barely because the placement is a hair off actually I did pretty good so at this point where it leaves his hand I make the parented sword uh, invisible technically it's still there so when he throws the sword that one stays in his hand but since I've made it invisible you actually don't see it um, and so all I did is I spawned in a second sword, I turned this sword on, and I just moved it over to where I felt it was close enough that it was on top that nobody would notice. And you can see there still is a little bit of overlapping here, but it's close enough for my standards, which apparently aren't very high. Um, anyway, so yeah, at this point, one sword goes invisible, another sword becomes visible, and this sword, since it is not parented to him, is very easy to animate. And you can see it kind of rotates weird, but it works. And the way I made it spin like that, you can see I only have this keyframe and this keyframe here, but for some reason it still does three full rotations. And the way to achieve that is just merely messing with the rotation panel. All right, sorry for that, I had to take a quick break. I had a cookie emergency, I had to pull the cookies out of the oven. I thought I could make it before the timer went off, but I was too long-winded. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Um, so as I was saying, you can see that the sword actually rotates three times before it hits that door. I think it's three, let's check. Uh, one, two, yep, on the third it hits the door and sticks in. And now you can see I only have two keyframes there, and to achieve this you actually just mess with the rotation function. Um, I don't want to delete this keyframe because I have everything queued up as far as the camera goes. Actually, you know what, let's do it. Let's show you how to actually achieve this. Uh, let's delete that, and let's delete that camera frame. So let's go back to here, where we change swords, as you can see. Nothing is happening, um, and what I want to do is, first of all, I turn the camera keyframe off because I like to, I guess, animate my characters and then catch the camera up. You may like to do it differently. Anyway, so at this point, where one sword becomes invisible and the other one becomes visible, all I do is add a keyframe, let's say, over here. You want to keep it a generally short distance because, you, I guess, if you're going for a slow motion effect of a sword spinning, then go for it. But I want this to be somewhat quick as it flies into the door. Um, bring up the position, little 3D puller things, and I'm just going to move it forward until it gets to about right here. And now this is where the rotation thing comes into play. You can see I've got the Y panel here, I want to be moving it, let's see, this way, because that's where the way it's going to go if I'm spinning it forward, I think. Yeah, I do. And 
the way this works is so if I keep spinning this, you can see on this slider that it just keeps going. I can actually spin this a million times, and that's just gonna go crazy. And you'll, I mean, just <laughs> let's watch. And I guess if that's what you're going for, then that's what you're going for. But I do not want to have it rotate that many times. I'm actually gonna stay around right there. And so what that's doing with the rotation thing is it's telling the object that by the time it reached this, by the time it reaches this point, it needs to be at negative 1,476 degrees, which is technically three times around the slider. And so that's how I achieve the spinning effect with only two keyframes. So let's press play. And it looks like I did way more than I needed to. Let's, you know what, let's just take this back to zero. And, all right, one, two, is that three? I don't know. We'll just see how that looks. Like I said, it just depends on what you're wanting to do. Yeah, that's good enough. And I guess if I move this out just a little bit more, give it some more time to get there, it's gonna be, there we go, that's good right there. And as you can as you can see here, um, when we talked about the rotation point in the, vi uh, the door animation tutorial, I would probably want to move this till it's about right here in the hilt of the sword so that when it rotates, it rotates around this point instead of this random point and makes it kind of look a little cockeyed as it rotates. Um, but anyway, now let's go for the camera. So I'm going to turn the camera keyframe back on. And the end point of the sword is right here at 110. So I'm going to go ahead and add another keyframe right here at 110. And all I'm going to do is position this camera where I want it. I actually want it to have a little bit outside here on the side so that it shows. And now when I press play, whoosh, it follows the sword into the door. Now, the default feature of your camera is actually, oh, I guess it's not default, but something to look out for. For example, if for some reason it looks like this when you're doing it. Let's see if this is what I'm going for. Uh, it still works, but oftentimes, the camera will move not how you think you want it to, and that's because it's either set on rotate or it's set on move. I go over this option in the camera tutorial earlier in this series, so go ahead and watch that for the definitions. But for this case, I want it on move because I don't want it rotating around the object, I want it to move with the object. So when I let go of the sword, well, bam, into the door. So that is my basic camera rigging tutorial here. Um, it would work the same, let's say, if I wanted to follow his hand. Let's actually show that right quick. Let's take this camera um, position and actually bring it down. Let's say I want to follow his hand like this. And then I'll bring it down again. Reposition this camera, let's say about right there. And this camera where he looks around. Mm, we'll just keep those. Yeah, we'll keep those. And then, actually, we are going to put this on instant. I always tell myself I'm going to make these tutorials short, and then I don't. So <laughs> I apologize if this is too long and too boring for those that just want to learn how to do it. I'm going to bring this camera frame out. And we're going to bring this right there. All right, so next we need to bring, uh, we'll just we'll, we'll just leave his head out. So let's see how this looks. Dun -dun, shows the sword. I'd instant it up, I mean, it's kind of a stupid effect now, but when I look at it. But yeah, basically, no matter what body part you wanna follow, as far as like rigging it, I guess is the term, I don't know if I'm using that term correctly, just have the camera where that item's supposed to be. Um, it's pretty easy, so I know Right here, this is where his arm's gonna be. And right here, this is where his arm's gonna be. And since they're both moving at the same speed, the camera sticks right up with his arm, as you can see when I play it. And I don't have to worry about having a million different keyframes to move the camera around. It's simple, just put them, line them up where they're gonna be and have the position pretty much the same and you'll get the desired effect of first person, uh, third person, a million, per you know, whatever per person you're, camera view you're going for it's gonna work and right here this trick as far as having two separate items in the same position one is parented goes invisible one that is not parented becomes visible 
and you're still able to have something like that. So, this is Ski Dude. This was my camera rigging tutorial. If you have any other specific needs or I guess something you can't figure out or want to do in Minimator, let me know and I will probably be able to make a tutorial for you. I know everybody is begging for bendable arms and limbs. David is working on it, so please stop spamming the forum and my comments for it because I'm just the tutorial guy. I don't make the game. So uh, just be patient because it is one guy making this whole program. Anyway, rate, subscribe, thumbs up, any questions in the comments below. I will catch you guys later. This is Ski Dude. Peace.